So hello and welcome to the X Battle Pod. My name is James, your host, and today I'm joined by Laura, and this is the shorter, quick fire questions version of the podcast. So if you haven't already listened to the full episode, please go and do so after this, of course, because you want to enjoy this one first also. Um so Laura, this is basically just a little bit of bit of fun. It's just roughly ten questions, you just answer them quite quickly, but about a minute for the answers and just, you know, enjoy enjoy the where your brain takes you that's the idea of it so it's just you know off a little the spontaneity cuff. okay let's go so my first question always is is where is your favorite place you've ever lived this is hard this is hard maybe okay two options top two top ooh, three okay i'll be, I'll be quick uh this one that i'm living in now in fredericksburg i right by a park love it Second would be I lived on the top floor of this apartment in Linea Garten and like the sunset every night. I think I watched it every single night on my balcony and it was just like everything that I needed. Like little top floor living is like I get why people are like, oh, penthouse. Like that's nice. It's nice. You're like you just like leave the whole world behind and have a moment, you know, at least that was how I felt. I really liked it. And then just before that, I was living in Minnesota and I was living renting this condo but it was like a big industrial loft it used to be like a shoe factory but so it just had like and i was on the corner so it had like walls and walls of floor to ceiling huge industrial windows and i just yeah as you can see if i'm i live inside but i always wish i were outside and so like the closer to that i can be i think the better anyways so those were actual like physical locations but and i think you probably meant countries but like i i named them all that i lived in I love them. It's up to your interpretation, which is wonderful uh, that you've taken that. Um, my next favorite question is, what's your favorite international food? That's tough. Really? I've never said they easy questions. I know. I'm sorry. It's like having like a deep crisis here. Okay. I think I'm going to say, because I was so anti it when I moved and my I went from like the, the 180, like the whole, so I'm vegan. So the vegan version of all this, I'll save you from saving that every time. But like, like the Swedish meatball, mashed potato, pickle, lingonberry jam combo. So the IKEA plant buller is. <laughs> gotta be, I think it's gotta be homemade. I, <laughs> I went, I, you know, I don't think I ever did the IKEA lunch. I've seen it, I've heard about it. You know, in all the vegan in Gothenburg, vegan in Sweden communities, and people are always posting about it. But the best vegan food I had in Gothenburg was the. Uh cauliflower tacos from tacos and tequila oh. that was the best vegan food i had yeah sorry i never had that why well, that's worth a trip to sweden right there well i think they stopped doing it because when i went last time they, i know it was, they, they had the mushroom ones but it weren't as good as the, the cauliflower no but... it's not the same yeah oh. cauliflower tacos are elite cry about that later <laughs> okay next question i'm ready what's your favorite international tradition i think wow this is becoming very swedish heavy but uh, I think I loved how two things. One, I loved how in Sweden there was like a pastry for basically every day of the calendar. We were celebrating something and a pastry was involved and it was something usually to do with like Christianity, but nobody was really quite sure. But like I like I grew up in the US, very surrounded by Christianity. I didn't know there were so many Christian holidays until I moved to Sweden. <laughs> it's ever the like nobody really knew what they were about. But they were like about like a little bun with some raisins in it, you know, or like one with some cardamom or one. With... So that. And then the second one, I think like the midsummer Christmas on the Swedish calendar. It feels like they're like just the right amount of time apart that like just is about the time that you're like, oh, man, I could really use a big holiday. There's one that they're like, don't worry, we're redecorating everything and we're turning our entire like society into this holiday for an extended period of time. And then midsummer, it's like, could you eat another strawberry? I don't think so, but like we're gonna try. So those are the two. <laughs> and and down like a little frog. You know. Yeah, exactly. Also, they get like five days off of work for midsummer. It's like midsummer, but then like midsummer's eve, but then like what's the after midsummer day? And then and about three weeks later, you have five weeks off. So right, it's, it's just like the warm up. It's like pre summer, summer. Yeah, it's not the midsummer then. Yeah, <laughs> I won't raise that. What's your favorite thing about living abroad? Oh. I feel like now, so I'm like, what, six years in, is that six, something? I feel like I finally landed in that, I felt glimpses of this throughout my time, but now I feel like I'm like fully embodying it, 
uh, that I get to I get to expand my world so significantly that instead of feeling like oh I'm missing this and I'm missing this and I'm missing this it feels like wow I get to experience so much from like so many different cultures I feel like I have homes in like three different places I don't yet have homes in three different places but like I feel like I have a home and like three very different places and I feel really connected with all of those places and I feel like I benefit so much from from the people and my experience in those places and I think yeah initially it felt more like oh like I'm missing this and I'm missing this and of course there there are moments of that like my whole family's on holiday right now and I couldn't join for various reasons but you're still missing things sometimes but it really feels more of like oh wow I get to experience like these not totally postmodernistic, just like picking the best of every culture but more of like oh I get I get to experience so many different cultures and have them all be part of like my life in this moment and I think that is yeah that's a great fit for at least for me as a person I don't know if it's for everybody but it definitely is feels amazing yeah well, you know, yeah it, it, it forges you a little bit and where you live somewhere you mold slides that that environment and you kind of build on your previous mold, so to yeah. speak. And you have this kind of hi- hi- hybrid person which gets developed. What is your best homesickness remedy? So I never, I don't think I had like fast food for like so long before I, when I was living in the US, right? I was just like, like maybe an undergrad for sure, you know, but like after that wellness. Um, and now, like I have never, I don't think I've had a, coca-cola since i was like seven except for that when i was in sweden i was like you know what i could really use right now i could use a coca-cola and some pringles you know <laughs> or like french fries from not mcdonald's but max and i know that max is, is like yeah exactly it's not it's not american but it's like i can go and i can get like a veggie burger a veggie a vegan milkshake like a coconut whatever a milkshake and fries and nothing feels like yeah so that so that's it. The, the avocado burger thing though is great, which they have at the plant based avocado. Exactly. They like it's so good. It's like the best vegan the fast food I've ever had, I think. So I think you're exactly exactly and so that's what I think it hits on like a core level because also, you know, I I stopped eating meat when I was like in college at the end of college and so I hadn't had in like growing up we weren't really allowed to have junk food except for like sometimes like we could go to McDonald's for like like somebody like a tree you know like we were like we were on a trip and we were like anyways so we were like supposed to my parents somehow succeeded to make like fast food like the thing that we really wanted because we were like never really allowed to have it um and so i think it feels also very like childhood almost because it was like yeah it wasn't like a guilty pleasure like yeah exactly exactly i'm like oh, taboo. Yeah, I when we got this. <laughs> exactly exactly but it not in like a toxic diet culture way, but more in like a, this isn't even food for my body. <laughs> I'm not sure what this <laughs> is, but it's nice. <laughs> and then what's the hardest thing about living abroad? Unless you want to like be flying all the time, like not being there for everything. I like love, I mean, these days I love, what is it, Jomo? Like the joy of missing out, I'm not that about. I'm like a random, it seems like you love, you love to hit the pub with your buds i'm kind of like ah, nah but for people's like birthdays and like events and like kids being born and even just like tuesday afternoon coffees that you just like can pop over for i think i miss or that's like the hardest part is like not being able to be there with all your people all the time right because you can only like be in one country at one time spontaneity yeah spontaneity and like missing missing out on the things you're not there for <laughs> but maybe that would be whether i lived abroad or not but definitely it feels like especially when there's like an ocean and like a nine hour flight it it feels a little more significant but if you went back you'd miss out on things you now love about your new home or, or your previous home so, so that's, it's... that's the thing about expanding your life exactly exactly it's, it, that's where i say i really do feel like it's expanded but i still have that in me a little the more people you know, the more people you miss, you know. Have you started working on the IP for teleportation or something that might help? Exa- yeah, yeah. I've, I've looked into it. I, I can't, you know, for confidentiality reasons, I can't speak to it. 
I can't say they're not working on it. <laughs> well, fingers crossed for that one. Um, but what what's the best best phrase you've learned since living abroad? It doesn't have to be in the language. It can be an international phrase like someone's just said to you in passing, but what's the best phrase you've learned? Can I have a hint? Well, for me, it was log on because it was perfect. Word. It was the Goldilocks word for me. Yeah, that's a good one. Man, I feel like there were, especially in Sweden, there were so many. Oh my God, I'm totally blanking. Oh, I know. Okay. So <laughs> it's not really an expression, but I loved like capital L love um, in Sweden when like everyone is leaving, you know, and you don't just say like, hey, or hey, dog, you say like, hey, hey, no, hey, 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 say bye like that to each other I'm just or maybe maybe it was just the adults that I was around but I was just like this is the it just like melts my heart I think it's like so and I don't mean this in like I feel like it's gonna sound like condescending or patronizing I don't mean that at all but it's like this is the cutest thing ever like I am I'm dead every single time <laughs> so cute it's, you're right it's true like Swedes do say everything twice like shena shena it's like so I found hilarious hearing because like hello Hi, hi. so cute i just like i don't i don't know and i shouldn't say it like that because that's sounding like very yeah like i said like kind of condescending or something like that but it's just like or i should say endearing it's just like really just kind of breaks your heart in like a really good way <laughs> it's wholesome it's wholesome it's so sweet it feels so sweet yeah what's your best way of making new friends yeah since i bragged about being so great about it <laughs> which i should say also i left that out. i was like i was doing all the activities but i also feel like i had people who just like showed up and committed to including me and that is i don't know i don't think that was anything i did except for like maybe some incense that i burned or something <laughs> but sorry now to answer your actual question between making friends i think what i finally learned is like showing up as yourself as authentically as possible i think i made a lot of i think it was pretty pretty authentic but i think i also met a lot of people and then it was only those times that i felt really really open or really safe or really intentional about being vulnerable or being just being myself you know and like doing the things i like to do that i feel like i made those connections that like really that really stick, that really give you a lot of, or a lot of life, or a lot, add a lot of uh, depth or meaning to life. They're just fun, also fun. That that comes through. Yeah. So be yourself and show up and hope people like you. <laughs> and then my second to last question is what's the best thing to do in your new home city? So, Copenhagen, what's the best thing to do? Oh, man, there's so many things. It depends on the season. Obviously, get a bike and bike around. Try not to bike during commuting hours if it's your first time biking in a while because that's going to get intense. But I think the seeing the city by bike is completely different by foot. Not bad at all. There's a great metro system. Driving, cannot recommend. It's kind of tricky because they like don't really want cars in the middle of the city. And there's so many bikers. So bike, get a bike. And then I think go, if it's the summer, go find some water and jump in it. And if it's the winter or you don't really feel like swimming, you don't want to do something outdoorsy, I would say take the train or drive um, up to Louisiana. So it's not really right in the city, but probably like 35, 40 minutes north of the city is Louisiana, like Modern Art Museum. And it's this beautiful, beautiful gallery that's like sitting on top of a hill on a cliff that's overlooking the sea. You can see Sweden from there. And it's just like, it's just, it's gorgeous. Even if you don't like art, it's just like so serene and so beautiful and uh, architecturally very interesting. Those are my two recommendations. Has that inspired the Louisiana in America as well then? <laughs> you know, I think, I think different. I think there were different Louisas, women named Louisa who were, who were inspiring it. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a story on how it got its name, but we'll save that for another time. Wonderful. And then my last question is what's your best expat life hack? Oh, take really good care of yourself. Yeah. I think that, that, do you want me to add some more words to that? No, I think you can, that minimalism is good. Yeah, good. The first time I answered the question concisely. There we go. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you, Laura. I really appreciate your time and your living in extra time right now what we what we thought we would be doing but so thank you for 
for sharing everything, your time, your thoughts, your energy, your passion for, for what you do and where you've lived. It's it's really infectious. I really enjoyed, you know, getting to know you on that deeper level of, of your, your journey. And thank you. And I hope everyone listening has also shared that same enjoyment that I've had. So wonderful. And hopefully we'll see you all next time for the expat pod. Thank you.